Okay, I think uh, there's still a few people. If people just uh, signify that we're ready to start, just uh, just put on chat if you if you're ready. Okay, so I've got a, a signal from people. So thank you very much. So I hope you had a, a good stretch. So now we will go to our second half of our session. Once again, also, uh, I'd like to welcome some of the new uh, participants. So now we, uh, I would like to introduce our next speaker. So our next speaker is uh, also our co-chair, and she's the youngest of the uh, participants. And I'm very proud to say that Jem has been an excellent co-host. And, and as they always say, if, if you need someone to deal with technology, you need a, a digital native. And usually a digital native is someone who is less than 40 years old. And so Jem is, is someone who's, who's really helped us make this happen. So Jem likens herself to Moana, always coming back to the sea and trying to see how far she'll go with her long-term goal of being at the forefront of marine conservation. She finished a Bachelor of Science majoring in Environmental Science from the Ateneo de Manila University. She was one of 10 Filipinos to receive the prestigious Australian Leadership Award from OSAID, and through that pursued her Master's of Environment degree at the University of Melbourne. Over the past decade, she had extensive experience working for local and international environmental consulting firms, nonprofit organizations, and in academia. She's a very avid outdoors woman, traveler, and musician. She has gone to the three Apos of the Philippines, Mount Apo, Apo Island, and Apo Reef, hiked up some of the highest peaks in Asia, like Mount Kinabalu, and gone diving in some of the best sites of the Coral Triangle. She sings with the Bukas Pilot Music Ministry, has done local music theater productions and written heartfelt songs about things she cares about. When she's not working on science, you'll see her out and about playing soccer or training for a triathlon. Today, she'll be talking about her ongoing project, which is part of the Old Dominion University, where she is doing her doctorate under a Fulbright scholarship. So take it, take it away, Jim. Thank you very much, Doc Yob. Again, my name is Jem Baldissimo. Magandang umaga po sa lahat ng nanonood mula sa Pilipinas. Isang mapagpalayang umaga sa inyong lahat. And to everyone who's watching this in other parts of the world, here in Norfolk, it's already 9.59 in the evening. So good evening to everyone as well. I'm here to talk about an ongoing project that I'm involved in. So the stuff that I'll present to you guys today is more of a preview and an update on what we're actually doing. But the main topic that I'm looking at is at determining the genetic diversity and connectivity of marine ornamental fishes in the Philippines. So before I go through talking about this topic, I want to first zero in on the Philippines. So the Philippines is the center of marine shore fish diversity in the coral triangle. But then again, our local marine biodiversity is threatened by things like overfishing, habitat degradation, as well as climate change. And these three factors can potentially make us, instead of a center of marine shorefish biodiversity, a center of marine shorefish adversity. So in connection with this, we tried to find out what the status of the Philippine coral reefs were. So DOST Picard, or the Department of Science and Technology through the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development, or DOST Picard, as I've said, funded a national assessment of coral reefs program. And I was actually involved in this project as a research assistant where we studied from 2014 to 2017, um, the fisheries livelihood. So in particular, I was 
part of this project called PEARL, which stands for People and Environment Assessment of Reef Fish Resiliency and Associated Livelihoods. And in this project, I had the opportunity to go around the Philippines and even go into very remote areas like Tawi-Tawi. And in this, these areas, we were able to talk to fishermen and their communities and ask them about what type of fish they got, how big these fish were, and what fishing gear they were using. I also had the opportunity through this project to do some fish visual census and see the coral reefs and the fishes up close. And it was actually this opportunity that introduced me to marine ornamental fishing, which is a reef associated livelihood in some coastal communities. So if we zero in on marine ornamental trade, it does have some benefits. So it provides livelihood for fishermen. It's also a hobby for aquarists and it provides support for a lot of marine educational programs. So for example, if you are someone who doesn't really have the opportunity to go underwater or go diving, then you'd be able to see this marine life up close if you go to an aquarium or a museum. However, there have been concerns about the marine ornamental trade. It's been found to have a large appetite because of the volume of fishes that are, are traded annually. And it has been seen to have negative effects. For example, it has been found to be the cause of extirpation and overharvesting in some areas. It has caused changes in trophic compositions in some local reefs. And it has been a cause for introduction of non-native species. So if some of you are familiar with the issue of the lionfish invasions in the Caribbean, they're saying that it was because of an aquarium fish, a lionfish, that was probably flushed in a toilet or just released into the sea. Another concern with regard to marine ornamental trade is the high post-capture mortality, which means that after a fish is caught, they eventually just die out before they even get to the supply. There has been an underestimated exploitation rate and it has been associated with some habitat destructive methods because some fishermen use cyanide to stun the fish first so that they'd be able to catch the fish. Now, if we focus only on marine ornamental fishing in the Philippines, not many people would know that we are actually one of the top exporters globally. So the Philippines and Indonesia exports the most number of marine ornamental fishes. The past studies that have been done in our country are mostly regarding import and export trade mechanisms, value chain analysis, and looking at the vulnerability of marine ornamental fishes to overfishing. However, it seems that based on some studies, the effect of the aquarium trade on the coral reef system or the ecosystem itself remains undocumented. There have not been any formal stock assessments or they would be lacking, and we do have a limited fisheries management strategy in the country. Um, another finding was that there is a need for understanding the population biology and interconnectedness with other populations. And this is with regard to the targeted species. And it's actually this last point that has further pushed me to work towards a project that can contribute to determining genetic diversity and connectivity of marine ornamental fishes in the Philippines. So going back to our study, the two central questions that we're actually trying to look at this, in this proposed study is about genetic diversity and genetic flow. So we want to ask, have there been any centennial changes in genetic diversity and in gene flow between populations for ornamental fishes in the Philippines. Now, genetic information like these can actually help add insight to how marine ornamental fish populations have been affected. Um, but you guys might be wondering, how can we actually look at centennial changes? Because that seems to be a very long time ago, right? Well, 
we have to do a bit of time traveling for that. And so I want to talk about the albatross expedition, which will be the key for us to study centennial changes. Many people know that the Philippines was a colony of the US after the Battle of Manila Bay in 1898. But not many people know that soon after that, the Smithsonian Institution came to the Philippines on the USS Albatross between 1907 to January 1910 to survey the Philippine Islands. And they collected over 79,357 fish specimens. And they preserved this in rum, so the DNA was actually intact. Now, the U.S. National Science Foundation has funded the Philippines PIRE project, which is short for Philippines Partnerships for International Research and Education. This project is a collaboration between governmental and academic institutions in the U.S., including my university, Old Dominion University, where I'm studying right now, as well as some institutions in the Philippines, which include the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, and the National Fisheries Research and Development Institute, or NFRDI. We also have local collaborators from the Philippines, which are the three universities, Siliman University in Dumaguete, Mindanao State University in Tawi-Tawi, as well as the University of the Philippines in Mindanao. Now, the overall goal of our project is to look into the genetic diversity of the USS albatross specimens and assess the impact of overfishing and habitat degradation on these species. My proposed project, which will be for my dissertation, shall focus on the subset, which is just the marine ornamental fishes. Now, given these two concepts, the first, which is that genetic variation can infer levels of migration, gene flow, and extinction risk. And the second point, which tells us that exploited populations have a lower heterozygosity, allelic richness, versus exploited populations. Given these two points, we can hypothesize that maybe the albatross collections from the 1900s would, be, would have higher genetic diversity and higher connectivity compared to the local contemporary collections that we would be getting right now. So we expect these to have a lower genetic diversity and less connectivity. So how do we plan to investigate that? We plan to investigate the genetic diversity and connectivity through going back to the same albatross sites if possible, and then collecting the same marine ornamental species that the USS albatross collected. And here on the slide, I have some examples of some of the marine ornamental fishes that they were able to collect. So we could either buy them from the market or have some fishermen collect them for us. And then we'd proceed with DNA extraction for both the albatross and their contemporary samples. And then we would genotype them using high throughput sequen sequencing. And then we'll go through bioinformatics where we filter out and we do some data analysis on the genotypes that we were able to sequence. And then we proceed with the po population genomic analysis. So what's the status of our project right now? Currently, we've done fish collections in a few localities in the Philippines, in Batangas, in Zambales, for the contemporary collections. Last summer, we went to Camarines Sur and we were able to collect some fishes there. And we've also done two practical computing and bioinformatics workshops. And in these workshops, we held them in Siliman University, where participants were from different universities in the Philippines. And we also had interns who are part of the research experience for undergraduates. And these are students from the four collaborating universities from the US. We've also gone through the initial stages of genotyping for some species, and we're also in the initial stages of bioinformatics analysis. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our research has been delayed for a bit, 
but we do have a lab continuity plan at the moment and we've been trying to adapt to the current situation and we've looked at things that we can do right now while we are here in the US and hopefully when it's safe to travel again we'd be able to go back to the Philippines and continue our sampling but at the moment we're all waiting with bated breath if you know we'd be able to do some genotyping and if we'd be able to do analysis on these specimens from the albatross and the contemporary samples that we have but i'm really excited to see what we'll find about the marine ornamental fishes between the 1900s and now so as i've said since we're still in the process of going through we're, we're still in the middle of doing our data collection at the moment you can find out more about our research by checking us out on Facebook and on Twitter. We also have a website that is dedicated to the Philippines Pi Project. If anyone wants to collaborate as well, we are free. We please feel free to reach out to me. I have my email here and you can also follow my adventures as a PhD student in the US at the moment, a Fulbright scholar. Um, and you can connect with me through social media as well. I'd like to acknowledge the National Science Foundation for fu funding the Philippines Pyre Project, our project collaborators locally and here in the US. I would also like to thank the Carpenter Lab from the Biological Sciences Department of ODU who has been really instrumental in doing all the field work and lab work that we have here. And of course, the Fulbright Graduate Student Program, who is funding me to be here right now. And lastly, I'd like to thank the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering for this opportunity for us to share our current research. We think that it's very important for us to know not only the current science, but also know something about our history. And I was really surprised to know that, you know, the Smithsonian was already established ever since the 1900s and they even went to the Philippines. Actually, this albatross collection that we're looking at right now is the biggest collection that they do have. And it will be interesting to find something about the science, but also something about you know our heritage. The Filipino word for the sea, the, our sea creatures is Yaman Dagat. And it's definitely a treasure that we should hold and sustain. And we're hoping that through this project, we'd be able to contribute to that. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Salamat. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask later. Thank you very much, Jim, for that uh, wonderful talk. Very fascinating. And uh, you think, well, when we watch the movie, uh, uh, <laughs> Finding Nemo, you realize, well, the Philippines sends all these Nemos and uh, your work is very important for that, making sure that we, we are able to sustain and uh, protect these clownfish.